When you log on to the internet, you find yourself in an endless ocean of information. You can disappear into this world for hours on end, surfing all kinds of sites, not even suspecting that this ocean has an entire Mariana Trench. Hidden in its depths is information that ordinary users, powerful organizations, and even intelligence agencies dream of gaining access to. In this episode of Simple Infographics, we'll talk about the deep web and the dark web. The World Wide Web was born out of the integration of an array of computer networks and hypertext links that provide two-way communication between pages. Its creator, Tim Berners-Lee, needed a convenient way for thousands of people to communicate with each other while working on a project. In 1980, he wrote the Enquirer program, which eventually became the prototype of the World Wide Web. Even then, Berners-Lee knew that such a network would change the world, because it meant that all information would be brought together into one place. And he wasn't wrong. Today, along with email, instant messaging, and multiplayer games, the World Wide Web is only one of many internet services that combines a colossal array of hyperlinked pages. The user can move from one page to another in pursuit of their topic of interest, going down a rabbit hole of information. This created the need for automatic data indexing through search engines. The part of the internet that's searchable is known as the visible web. This is the surface level of the internet that we use for our everyday needs. Among them is the so-called deep network, or the deep web. Huge amounts of information travel through the deep web, and encrypted data not intended for public access is also exchanged and stored here. The deep web includes everything not shown by search engines. This can include a wide range of content, for example, a page that requires a password to log in, data of banking operations, scientific papers and medical records, a site whose author didn't share it with anyone or abandoned it long ago, or even pages that are generated for a specific user, such as a newsfeed or a shopping cart. No matter how powerful a search engine is, the user sees only the tip of the iceberg. Most information remains safely locked away in databases. According to rough estimates, the deep web is 400 to 500 times larger than the visible web. In 2010, the volume of information in the deep web was estimated at 7,500 terabytes. Because new pages appear so quickly, it's simply impossible to measure this exactly. There's nothing extraordinary about the deep web. It's just the invisible part of the internet that's not of any interest to the average user. Although the deep web is hidden behind protocols that support HTTPS encryption, it's not difficult to access it. You just have to know what you're searching for and how to search for it. There is, however, a part of the deep web associated with illegal activity. In fact, it's become the embodiment of the entire hidden portion of the internet. We're talking about the dark web or the dark net. This term refers to a combination of several different technologies, including Tor, L2TP, and others. The dark web is the dark corner of the World Wide Web where any user can go to find things that can't be asked for in the ordinary world. Most people use the terms deep web and dark web interchangeably as synonyms, but that's not quite accurate. The deep web consists of non-indexed pages which are invisible to search engines or deemed unsuitable for indexing. The dark web, however, purposefully tries to stay in the shadows. It should be noted that the dark web predates the internet itself. The term came about in 1969 in reference to the computers in the US Department of Defense's ARPANET network. Dark nets were programmed to receive messages, but their addresses were unlisted, and they didn't respond to external requests. In 2002, as part of a scientific report, Microsoft employees described the dark net as a network which exists parallel to the visible web, which requires specific protocol for access. But the dark web became really famous in 2013 after the exposure of Silk Road, an anonymous platform for the sale of prohibited goods, mostly drugs. There are only about a few thousand sites on the dark web. The network's key characteristics are anonymity, high levels of data encryption, and a complete lack of censorship, which attracts users with a variety of goals. This is a paradise for thieves, scammers, terrorists, and anyone professionally engaged in illegal activity. In 2015, researchers from King's College London analyzed the contents of 2,723 sites on the dark web and found that 57% of them contained illegal material. The dark net truly shows you the darkest side of humanity, trading platforms for drugs, weapons, and falsified documents, plans for the 3D printing and construction of illegal products, blueprints of strategic facilities and military bases, pornography, racist content, platform for radical organizations to communicate, and even videos showing the abuse of people and animals. There's even a special dark Wikipedia, the Hidden Wiki, a cataloged collection of dark net sites organized by topic, as well as search engines that preserve the anonymity of user queries like DuckDuckGo and Not Evil. Unlike the visible web, where sites work around the clock and are supported by servers, URL addresses on the dark net are launched from personal computers and remain active only until the owner achieves their respective goal. Sites on the dark web do not leave any traces of their existence between periods of activity, so it's practically impossible to track them. Bitcoin has made a large contribution to the dark net's development. The 
cryptocurrency allows users to conduct transactions without disclosing buyer and seller data. Special software is used when working on the dark web. In order to understand how it operates, let's consider how standard communication works on the internet. Traditionally, the World Wide Web uses a client-service interaction. The user uses a browser to send a request to a site server, and the server responds to the request with the page that the user needs. In this case, the site owners know the IP address that the request comes from, and the Internet Service Provider, or ISP, sees which site the user visited and when. Developments in technology have allowed for decentralized peer-to-peer -peer communication, where two users' browsers communicate directly without exchanging data through a server. Now, you can make audio and video calls this way, using only web browsers, no additional software required. Most of the time, the server isn't used in this situation, but the ISP still sees who the user communicates with and when they do so. This feature gives the ISP, along with state intelligence agencies, ample opportunities to block unwanted sites and collect user activity data. That's why the Tor, the Onion Router, was created. Free software for anonymous data exchange on the internet. Today, this is the most popular implementation of the dark web concept. Tor is based on the principle of onion routing. First, a special browser is installed on the computer, a modified version of Firefox. It routes all requests to pass through the Tor network, ensuring the user's anonymity. When the user opens a page in the Tor browser, the request the request is first encrypted several times, then sent to the server through several intermediate onion routers of the other users. Each of them removes one layer of encryption, like peeling an onion, without retaining any data about either the request source or recipient. This is why it's called onion routing. The response from the server then goes back to the user in reverse order, each intermediate router adds a layer of encryption, and then the user removes each layer to see the response. Such communication not only protects the contents of both the sender's request and the server's response, but also safely hides hides the sender's exact identity and geolocation. Even the server's location is hidden from outsiders. There are many Onion services inside the Tor network, messaging services like Ricochet, TorChat, and CryptoChat. Email sites such as ProtonMail and RiseUp, the internet station Deep Web Radio, and many others. Together, they form the dark web. Tor is used for the anonymous browsing of ordinary sites too. Many resources are keeping up with the times by having their counterparts in the dark net. For example, you can log into Facebook without leaving the dark web just by going to a special address. There's no censorship in this hidden social network comprised of over 1 million users. The content of these onion service sites is constantly changing. In 2015, more than 15% of resources were devoted to drugs. By 2016, only 8% accounted for such sites, and the most popular were those with political content Content, file sharing, and information storage. The Darknet's audience is also constantly changing. In the early 2010s, it was mostly drug dealers. And by 2019, there's been a distinct increase in the number of users targeted for fraud. Activities like account hacking, printing counterfeit money, stealing credit card numbers, and the like. 60% of forums not intended for drug sales are dedicated to fraud. Although the vast majority of its website content is illegal, the dark web is just really a communication tool that can be used in different ways. When writing about resonant topics, journalists actively use the dark web to communicate with anonymous sources. For example, the International Human Rights Organization, Reporters Without Borders, promotes Tor and teaches people how to use it. The Guardian, WikiLeaks, The New York Times, and BBC actively use Tor to obtain confidential data, as well as to provide information access to users in totalitarian countries. The absence of a digital footprint literally saves political informants and activists living in repressive states, where censorship runs rampant, and those with wrong opinions can be imprisoned. This use of Tor has led to backlash for decades. Many authoritarian regimes have tried to block access to the dark net. Since 2006, Thailand, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Tunisia, China, Egypt, Libya, and Syria have been at war with Tor. Some of them have tried repeatedly to block access, but have been unsuccessful. It's important to note that it's not illegal to merely access the dark web and deep web. You can browse literally any site that interests you, just as long as you don't purposely search for anything illegal or try to hack anything. Although Tor is one of the symbols of the dark web, this technology is not without its flaws. A user receives only relative anonymity and must carefully consider their next steps. For example, if you log on to Facebook through Tor, the system will know who you are, although it won't be able to determine your location. When using normal sites with legitimate content, you need to be sure that the sites support encryption using HTTPS protocol. If the URL starts with HTTP, this means that any request can be intercepted. And if intelligence agencies are watching you, they won't be able to decipher your communications through Tor. But they're still able to track the frequency of requests and responses, which can theoretically aid in their search. And of course, you shouldn't share your real information. For instance, the creator of the Silk Road trading platform we mentioned above was tracked down thanks to one comment he had left many years ago. 
He had briefly forgotten to use proper precautions, which lit up his email. The dark web is like a knife. On one hand, it's quite a useful tool. But on the other, it's a potentially dangerous weapon that not everyone should have access to. So, how do you feel about the dark side of the World Wide Web? Do you think that it's in defense of free speech and protection of personal data? Or is it just a way for criminals to communicate with each other? Write your opinion in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel.